hold on guys, I just keep getting this cramp and I don't know why. We can tell you why. Cellular respiration can occur aerobically and anaerobically. Aerobic respiration refers to when organisms take organic compounds in the presence of oxygen and convert it into carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. It's how we get our energy out of our food. Now what about when we don't have a sufficient supply or are short of oxygen? In such cases, organisms will undergo anaerobic respiration. Similar to aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration starts by breaking down the molecules of glucose via glycolysis, producing pyruvic acid. However, the pyruvic acid in anaerobic respiration then undergoes a new process called fermentation and produces ATP. But what does that all even mean? Let's think of it this way, football heads. Anaerobic respiration is like a good game of football. Think of glycolysis as a quarterback. He calls the play and starts it off. Glycolysis takes the glucose molecule and divides into two pyruvic acid molecules and nets two molecules of ATP. Gaining ATP through anaerobic respiration can be thought of as gaining yards. It's not as efficient as running the whole field, but we're getting close. Now in the Krebs cycle, the energy given off converts this into NADH, which also attracts electrons, reducing NADH into NAD+, until NADH is full and electrons can no longer transfer between them. You can imagine offensive linemen taking one tackle after the other until they just can't do it anymore. The electron transport chain allows for the transfer of electrons such that they're moving through a series of proteins and the energy of those proteins is used to pump protons, just as a running back is running through the field trying to score a touchdown, or in the case of respiration, acquire energy. At this point in anaerobic respiration, the traveling electron does not have access to oxygen, so the two cannot be added together as they do in aerobic respiration. The running back has just been tackled. So now it's up to the football team to think of another way to get through this. Let's go back to the quarterback. The pyruvic acid that was primarily produced after glycolysis is now converted further into lactic acid. The electrons from the formation of lactic acid is converted from NADH and can be transferred to lactate, therefore freeing up the NAD plus and regaining more electrons. The team is now moving further along the field, getting closer and closer to their end zone. This, as you can see, allows glycolysis to occur over and over again, generating the small amount of ATP each time. Although we are not gaining as much ATP as we do through aerobic respiration, this still serves as a sufficient temporary supply of energy and still gets the team closer to their objective. In humans, anaerobic respiration is carried out for only a short period of time. It normally occurs during strenuous physical exercises. It allows our bodies to push ourselves further than aerobic respiration would allow. However, as a result of anaerobic respiration, lactic acid is produced and builds up amongst the muscles. This buildup is the main reason why our muscles become weak and feel pain after exertion and why it's highly suggested that we stop running or moving so intensely. In order to overcome this buildup, one uses rapid breathing to restore oxygen supply to the muscles, allowing the acid to diffuse out of the muscles and into the blood where it will be carried to the liver for conversion of glucose. Of course, humans aren't the only organisms to perform anaerobic respiration. A sea turtle, for example, will fill its lungs with a single explosive exhalation and rapid inhalation, then divert to anaerobic respiration underwater for long periods of time. Organisms in submerged environments with low levels of oxygen will often rely on anaerobic respiration for survival. To summarize, whenever we carry out vigorous exercise or movement, our hearts and lungs do not generate sufficient oxygen to our muscles, making them unable to respire. This initiates anaerobic respiration and over time produces a buildup of lactic acid. At first this process acts as an extra push for organisms to perform beyond their regular abilities such as running further or diving deeper. However, as lactic acid continues to build up, this results in cramping and hindering our performance until we regain oxygen.